Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. We're back with the tactical analysis of an international match as Spain hosted Germany at the Estadio de la Cartuja in the UEFA Nations League. A draw would have been enough to secure a top of the group finish for Germany, but Spain and Luis Enrique had other ideas, tactically outclassing Jürgen Lehr's Germany. The match ended up 6-0 to Spain thanks to goals by Oyazabal, Morata, Rodri and a Ferran Torres hat-trick. The XG was comprehensive as well, with Spain ending with 3.47 compared to just 0.12 for Germany. But what tactics did Le and Enrique look to use? Let's take a look. A quick reminder of how both managers lined up as seen on the One Football app. Luis Enrique opted for a 4-1-4-1 on paper which was fluid on the pitch, whilst Le went for a 4-3-3. If you want formations, stats and more for your favourite international and club teams as well as players, check out the One Football app completely free through the link in the description below. Let's quickly touch on what Germany wanted to do on the ball before moving on to Spain. When possible, Germany would look to begin the play shorter, with Neuer's on the ball ability being a big factor in this. Spain's 4-1-4-1 would adapt, as Ferran Torres would push up alongside Morata to create a front two, whilst the rest of the midfield shifted to a lopsided diamond, with Dani Olmo staying slightly wider on the left. Neuer would then look to push higher to ensure the 3 vs 2 advantage. Gundogan and Kroos would drop deeper to create new options, whilst Goretzka pushed higher, and Spain could shift an extra midfielder higher to even things up. This meant that at times, Philip Max would be an easy outlet, although Roberto positioned himself so that he could press if the wide pass was launched, whilst keeping an eye on the wide region. If the ball did come to a fullback, Spain used an intense lateral press, preventing any passes back infield and often winning the ball back quickly here. More commonly however, Nabri would drop into the midfield to try and create a 4 vs 4 in midfield, which would actually become a 4 vs 3 advantage if their midfielder moved higher to pressure Neuer as well. This left a gap in the centre forward region, which we did see Sane move into on occasion to receive the longer ball. But more consistently, we saw Philip Max take advantage of being free and move right up the flank, which then allowed Werner to move into his preferred centre forward position and look to make runs in behind. And from higher up, Germany were limited in their ideas. Most commonly when a centre-back had the ball, because Spain held a high line, Werner looked to use his pace in behind to get on the end of a chipped ball. This could also often open up the room for Max when Werner moved into the half spaces, so the switch could go to the full-back instead. In deeper areas, Spain often shifted to a 4-5-1 to cover this wide overload, with a central midfielder often looking to join Morata in the press. But throughout the match, Germany struggled to get into dangerous positions in the final third to create high quality opportunities. So, what did Spain do with almost 70% possession? They, of course, primarily looked to play short, looking to find the centre backs. Initially, Germany were not proactive in their press, sitting deeper in a 4-3-3 and holding their shape so that Spain's fullbacks would push higher. They looked to overload the left hand side in particular, with Canales or Ruiz often draining Olmo and the fullback, which would naturally draw Germany across to cover. Crucially, Koke initially remained high in the right half space to draw in Max, so that a direct switch could potentially be on. However, Spain wanted to retain possession, so we often saw Koke drop into the midfield quickly from the space, often drawing in Werner, and once he received the ball, he would either look to find Roberto or Ferran for a 1 vs 1. This led to many dangerous situations and shots, as Ferran was happy to take on Max. But the central build-up play saw Spain have the most success. 
When the centre back had the ball, we began to see Germany press extremely high, committing the extra man to a centre back. When Spain's pivots dropped deeper, Germany would follow, leaving no cover. And crucially, Spain tended to have the numerical advantage, as when Koke and Rodri created the double pivots, Olmo could push into midfield and suddenly they could have a 4 vs 2 advantage. Crucially, Morata was willing to drop into the space between the lines as well, often drawing a centre back higher and allowing midfielders to run beyond him, who he would then look to find, and they created chaos in this manner. This pattern is present in Spain's final goal. Spain are building up deep and Germany look to press with Kroos and Gundogan picking up a pivot each. Morata then drops in to receive the ball, which draws Tar higher up and creates space for midfielders to run into. He finds Ruiz, who then perfectly sets up the excellent Ferran Torres. At the start of the second half, for a 15 minute spell, Lev tried to deal with the constant midfield inferiority by pushing Koch into the midfield when defending. But this experiment ended poorly. For this to work, one would expect Ginter and Max to play narrower to create a more traditional back three. But instead, they stayed wide which left Ta isolated. So, one might expect Ta to be more conservative as he had so much space to cover. But he was still aggressive in pushing up and looking to win the ball early when Morata dropped deep, meaning that the centre of the pitch was consistently exposed. This directly leads to Spain's fourth goal. Koch is high up and looking to pick up Koke to prevent the midfield overload, whilst the pivots push high and Morata is in acres of space between the lines. The chip ball comes down the line and Ginter moves across to cover, allowing Ruiz to run beyond him. Tar is aggressive looking to cover, leaving acres of space centrally. Gaia is found and Spain have a 3 vs 1 and Ferran finishes. Overall, Yogi Lowe's tactics were poor to say the least, and this video just touched on a few of the things that went wrong. There's so much more to explore, so let me know what other tactics you noticed down in the comments below. But what do you make of Lur lately? Drop it down below. I really hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, a like would go a long way. And if you want to support even further, whilst getting perks like exclusive videos and early access to videos, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. And of course, a special thanks to my current Patreons for their support, including Ivan, Philip Sam and Andre Tanasi, who recently joined my Ultra tier. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.